Welcome back to Session 2 of the Hard Cider School. In this session, I'll be discussing spring frost injury and the most common diseases and pests associated with apple production in the Midwest. I will also present various products that can be used to control pests. In Missouri, it's very difficult to grow blemish-free apples organically without a major reduction in yield. For organic production methods, Cornell University has a useful guide available online. Let's begin with low temperature injury. Most of the cultivars that we grow are not injured by low winter temperatures. However, in late winter, the fruit buds begin to deacclimate. Once apple trees begin growth in the spring, they go through a progression of stages, beginning with silver tip, where just the tips of the new leaves are visible, to half-inch green, tight flower cluster, first pink, full pink, first bloom, full bloom, and then petal fall. As the flower buds progress through these stages, they become increasingly susceptible to cold injury. For example, at one half inch green, about 90% of the flower buds may be injured at 15 degrees Fahrenheit. From full pink stage to petal fall, the same amount of bud mortality might occur at 25 degrees. These temperatures are only meant to be an estimate of potential bud kill, as the actual amount of injury is also dependent on the conditions preceding the low temperature event, the rate of the temperature drop, the length of time at sub-freezing temperatures, the cultivar, and the rootstock. Also, even if some flowers are lost, remember that many of the flowers will later be removed during thinning. Unfortunately, the king flower, or the one in the middle of the flower cluster, usually develops into the largest fruit and is a bit more susceptible to frost injury than others in the cluster, since it is the first flower to develop. When frost occurs after the fruit has set, there is often a brown ring of discolored tissue circling the fruit. Although the fruit surface is marred, the flesh of the fruit is not damaged. The bud stages are also used to describe when to apply various products. From green tip, through the pink stage, some products may be applied as frequently as five to seven days. From bloom through about second cover, products may be applied as often as every seven to ten days. The first cover spray means that an application is made seven to ten days after petal fall, with the second cover spray about a week later. After this, applications are extended to every 10 to 14 days from the third cover spray throughout the summer, depending on whether or not rain occurs. Probably the most serious disease in the Midwest is fire blight. This disease is caused by bacteria and kills blossoms, shoots, rootstocks such as M9 and M26, and can even kill young trees less than three years old. As I mentioned in the previous session, all of the Geneva rootstocks are resistant to fire blight. This pathogen overwinters in bark cankers. In the spring, bacteria ooze out of cankers and insects, including bees, carry the pathogen to flowers. On new shoots, infection occurs when the foliage remains wet for an extended period of time at temperatures above 60 degrees. After infection, the leaves and terminal shoots turn black and bend over, forming shepherd's crook of dead tissue. Bacteria can enter shoots through lenticels, which are small openings on the shoot surface. The pathogen can also invade the plant through open wounds from pruning cuts, hail, or from mechanical damage. One of the best ways to avoid fire blight is to grow an apple cultivar that is less susceptible to this disease. Here you can see that Brayburn, Jonathan, Gala, and Granny Smith are highly susceptible to fire blight, while Arkansas Black, Red Delicious, 
empire, and liberty have low susceptibility. In our experience, some of the high tanning cultivars used for hard cider are very susceptible to fire blight when environmental conditions are optimum for infection. Mortality range from 10 to 40 percent on newly planted Benet Rouge, Kingston Black, Rain de Pomes, Harrison, Hughes Crab, Porter's Perfection, and Dabonet trees, even though two applications of a bactericide were made. As soon as you see symptoms of fire blight, try to prune out infected shoots. However, cuts need to be made about 8 to 12 inches below the necrotic tissue, and the blades of your shears need to be dipped in a disinfectant between each cut to avoid transmitting the disease. A 10% solution of common household bleach in tap water can be used as a disinfectant. If fire blight was severe in the previous year, apply copper at silver tip, but never after this time as it would cause injury. At first bloom through petal fall, use no more than two applications of streptomycin, which is a bactericide. In some years, the bloom period is extended. However, limit the use of streptomycin to two times per season as resistant strains of this bacteria can develop with overuse of this product. Where fire blight resistance is a problem, other products such as fire line, firewall, casamine, or mica shield can be used. Fire blight can also be problematic where excessive nitrogen has been applied. If there is overly vigorous shoot growth, apogee can be applied at petal fall of the king flower. To limit shoot growth, and fire blight, but be advised that this product takes 10 to 14 days to affect growth. For detailed recommendations for fire blight and other pests, refer to the Midwest Fruit Pest Management Guide, which is available online. Apple scab is a fungal disease that causes light green spots on the leaves but in severe cases results in premature defoliation of the trees and also dark lesions on the fruit. During periods of leaf wetness, infection occurs at temperatures of 34 to 79 degrees. Some cultivars are resistant to this disease, such as Liberty and Gold Rush. Don't plant these cultivars near susceptible ones to preserve this resistance. Gala and Jonagold are highly susceptible to scab, and Honeycrisp has relatively lower susceptibility. Another practice is to mow fallen leaves on the orchard floor to help suppress this disease. Some also recommend a late ap fall application of urea, but I do not, as nitrogen applied at this time of year results in late season growth on night on trees and can cause cold injury to shoot trip tips if a low temperature event occurs later. For control of apple scab, sprays may be applied at green tip through cover sprays using any of the products listed here. It is important to use different products that have a different mode of action throughout the season to prevent the fungus from becoming resistant to a particular product. In the Midwest Pest Management Guide, the mode of action for each product is listed using what is known as a frac code. Using these frac codes, do not make more than four applications of any fungicide within the same code per season. Also, do not apply more than two sequential applications of a product that has the same frac code without changing to a product with a different code. Powdery mildew is another fungal disease that overwinters in the buds and infects leaves and blossoms. Infected leaves appear to be covered in a white powder. Infected flowers appear distorted and the fruit is stunted with this discolored pattern on the peel called netting. Infection occurs between 65 to 80 degrees when there is high humidity. 
Wet leaves are not required for infection. Any of the products listed here can be sprayed from tight cluster to second cover, making sure to avoid two sequential applications of a product with the same frat code. Cedar apple rust is another fungal disease that spends part of its life cycle on apple trees and the other part on cedar. Because cedar trees are common in the Midwest, this disease is prevalent. In late spring, during rainy periods, these yellowish-orange growths that contain the fungal spores, called telial horns, are visible on cedar trees. When conditions are right, the spores on the cedar tree are carried by the wind to apple trees, and they become infected with this disease. Orange to yellow spots are visible on infected apple leaves. Delicious Liberty, Gala, and Golden Supreme are resistant to cedar apple rust, whereas Golden Delicious, Jonathan, Gold Rush, Rayburn, Cameo, and York are susceptible. Fungicide products listed here can be applied at tight cluster through the second cover spray. There are three fungal rots that commonly occur on apple. The first is called bitter rot, or glomerella leaf spot. This is a disease caused by, the, by species of Colatotricum. Unfortunately, most all apple cultivars are susceptible to this rot, but Arkansas Black, Gala, Fuji, Golden Delicious, Pink Lady, and Enterprise seem to be the most problematic. Infection occurs when temperatures range from 61 to 86 degrees. Necrotic, irregularly shaped lesions are symptoms of this disease, and when the disease goes unchecked, it can cause defoliation. On the fruit, infection occurs at warm temperatures when trees are wet for five or more hours. After infection, Small, discolored circles can be seen on the fruit surface. As the fruit matures, these lesions expand. One way to distinguish this rot from others is to cut the fruit in half. This rot forms V-shaped decay in the flesh. The bitter rot fungus can be found year-round on buds, fruit, shriveled or mummified fruit left hanging on the tree during winter, dead wood, and in cankers. Also, overwintering leaf litter and prunings on the orchard floor can harbor this fungus and reinfect the trees. Also, it's important to prune and remove any fire blight infected tree branches as they can also harbor bitter rot. Fungicides can be applied from bloom through cover sprays to control this disease. White rot, also known as Botrysphyria rot, can be problematic. This pathogen enters the leaves through linosols on branches in June and July, with infection occurring at warm temperatures near 82 degrees. This rot causes cankers to form with the outer bark sloughing off infected tissue. On the fruit, lesions usually appear about two to four weeks before harvest. First, small reddish-colored lesions form around the linosols. As the fruit matures, lesions expand and become slightly sunken. This rot extends all the way to the core of the apple. On yellow-skinned apples like Golden Delicious, brown lesions on the peel often have a red halo. Fortunately, white rot is caused by a weak pathogen and infection occurs most often when trees are stressed by drought, winter injury, insects, fire blight, or poor nutrition. If you have good cultural practices, often this disease can be avoided. Susceptible cultivars include Golden Delicious, Grimes Golden, and Rome, whereas other cultivars like Jonathan and Red Delicious are less susceptible. The same fungicides as those used for bitter rot are also effective for white rot, with applications from bloom through cover sprays. 
Black eye, black rot, is another disease often known as frog eye leaf spot. Symptoms occur as leaf spots, fruit rot, and limb cankers. For leaf spots, symptoms occur at one to three weeks after petal fall as dark flecks that enlarge to tan lesions with a dark border, about a quarter inch in diameter. Warm temperatures with wet foliage favor disease infection. This fungus survives year-round on many parts of the tree. On flowers, the sepals become infected with black rot early in the season when temperatures are favorable and the foliage is wet for about nine hours. Although pimple-like lesions form on the young fruit, this rot is most apparent near harvest on the calyx end of the apple. Here you can see a range of susceptibility among various cultivars. Again, similar fungicides can be applied as those previous listed for the other two rots. The last two diseases are called fly speck and sooty blotch, which are caused by a complex of fungi. These species are, or diseases are aptly named and describe the superficial symptoms that occur on the apple peel. Infection occurs during the summer, so products listed here can be applied from first cover with additional sprays used at 10 to 14 day intervals as needed. Next are the more common arthropod pests. San Jose scale is an insect that can make fruit unmarketable and kills limbs if control of this insect is neglected. It is a small insect that secretes a white waxy material as it feeds and becomes covered by this substance. With time, this covering turns gray to black. Infested fruit develop a reddish ring around the scale. There are two generations of the scale per season in Missouri, and the timing of sprays is critical for control. Apply dormant oil at green tip. At pink, pheromone traps can be placed in the trees to monitor the adults. Insecticides are timed to control the young crawler stage of this insect by monitoring the traps or at the second or third cover sprays with esteem, diaz diazinon, or movento. For more information on monitoring pests with traps, there are many good university websites with details. The red or rosy apple aphid and the green apple aphid feed on the undersides of leaves. When heavily infested, leaves are curled with sticky honeydew on them and there will be small, deformed fruit at harvest. Tiny black eggs can be found on the bark of small twigs and limbs during winter. To control aphids, apply dormant oil at green tip or you can use a steam at one half inch green and continue with an insecticide through cover sprays if needed. Woolly apple aphids are a bit less common, but can be found on roots, in leaf axles, new shoots, and on limbs and the trunk. These aphids are purplish and are found underneath cottony secretions. B9, M9, M26 rootstocks are susceptible to woolly apple aphid. Insecticides listed here can be used to control above ground infestations but there are no products available to control root infestations. European red and two-spotted mites can be problematic on apple trees. Mites are found on the undersides of leaves and cause bronzing or defoliation if the infestation becomes severe on certain cultivars like Braeburn, Red Delicious, or Rome. There are up to eight generations of mites per year with European red mite egg hatch occurring at tight cluster. The worst outbreaks of mites occur when it is hot and dry. It is important to control broadleaf weeds like bindweed, white clover, 
and not we, as these harbor mites. For mite control, apply dormant oil at half-inch green tip. Thereafter, apply a miticide when there are more than five mites per leaf from this stage to April 1. From April to May, spray when there are more than 10 mites per leaf. Then, from June to August, treat when there are more than 15 mites per leaf. In the Midwest Pest Management Guide, the mode of action for each miticide is listed with its IRAC code. Make sure to change products with different codes each spray to prevent mites from becoming resistant. If a miticide is needed, check the pre-harvest interval as they vary among products. For example, Apollo cannot be sprayed within 45 days of harvest, whereas Invador can be applied as late as seven days before harvest. There are several types of plant bugs that infest apple orchards, including the tarnished plant bug. Adult tarnished plant bugs are about a quarter inch long and multiple generations of this bug occur per year. Adults overwinter on ground debris and are found in orchards in early spring before bloom. They feed on buds, flowers, and developing apples from early pink stage to ent until two weeks after petal fall, which causes deep dimples on fruit. After feeding, adults migrate out of the trees and lay eggs elsewhere. You can begin to scout for these bugs at the pink stage. If needed, apply any of the products listed here at the pink stage. Remember to alternate products with different IRAC codes when used. The pyrethroid products, which have a 3A IRAC code, are used only when there is a serious infestation of plant bugs, as these insecticides also kill predatory mites that feed on European red and two-spotted mites, which can then trigger an outbreak of these mites. There are several different species of stink bugs that can be problematic in orchards, especially the brown marmorated stink bug and the green stink bug, which have up to two generations per year. Usually products are applied in May when the adults emerge. These pests are difficult to control as they fly in and out of orchards and may leave briefly, but come back later. Mullen weed and legumes around orchards attract stink bugs to the area. Stink bugs cause dimpled fruit with necrotic tissue in the flesh. Use pyrethroids to control stink bugs only when they are problematic. Avant is a product that provides good stink bug control with only moderate mite toxicity. Codling moth is the most prevalent insect in apple orchards, with three generations per season. Adults are about a half inch long and emerge at bloom or petal fall. Eggs are laid on leaf surfaces near fruit, and when larvae develop, they bore into the flesh of the fruit, often to the core. After this, they exit the fruit to pupate. Eventually, they overwinter in a cocoon in protected areas under loose bark, debris under trees, and on picking crates left in the field. Pheromone traps can be placed in trees at bloom to monitor adults using at least two per block and replacing lures monthly. Sprays often begin at first or second cover and continue through summer cover sprays. Products listed here can be alternated among IRAC codes to avoid insecticide resistance. Mating disruption can also be used to suppress coddling moth populations. Dispensers are hung in trees that contain pheromone that prevents males from finding females and mating. Moths are not killed when using mating disruption. It is useful when apple blocks are at least five acres with low populations of moths, but is not effective 
on small orchards where there is a severe infestation. Even with mating disruption, border sprays are often used. Here I've listed several brands of dispensers and the number of dispensers needed per acre for each type. The oriental fruit moth is another pest that emerges about a month after the codling moth. Adult moths are about a quarter inch long and there are as many as four generations per year. The larva bores into a terminal shoot, causing it to droop in the spring, which often occurs at the top of the trees. Larvae also feed on the apple flesh, but they don't burrow to the core. Pheromone traps can be placed in the upper portion of trees just before bloom to determine when their control is needed. Petal fall is often the key time to apply an insecticide or when there are seven moths per trap. Several products included here are labeled for this pest and are used through cover sprays. Mating disruption can also be used on orchards that are at least two acres or more with low to moderate infestations. About 400 dispensers per acre are hung in the mid to upper part of the tree canopy at bloom. Plum cucurlio is a small snout beetle that first appears at bloom to petal fall and is active at temperatures above 70 degrees for about five to seven weeks. These insects are rarely seen during the day. Early feeding damage appears as small round holes on apples. Later, after they deposit their eggs, the damage is a tan scar on the fruit surface, often in the shape of a D. To limit plum cucurlio, remove drop fruit that contains larva. Products listed here can be applied at petal fall through second cover. The last insect is Japanese beetle. This iridescent insect emerges from the soil in late June with peak infestations occurring about mid-July, and then their numbers decline by early August. Japanese beetle will skeletonize leaves, and when they feed on the fruit, it becomes marred. Products such as Seven, Asale, Imidan, Danitol, Warrior, and Mustang Max are effective against Japanese beetles. Despite the many pests presented here, apples can be successfully and profitably grown in the Midwest for hard cider production. Fortunately, these pests are well known with plenty of information available from Extension and online sources. In the next session, Misha Kwasniewski will discuss how to press apples for juice and the production of hard cider. Happy growing!